got about a half an inch of water in here. It doesn't really matter. Your paint is going to sit on top of the water. Um, and there's a few pointers to that. You want to use just a little bit of paint on your brush and you want to barely touch the top of the water. The rest of this works because of science. Um, we recommend that you pick two colors. You could use as many as you want and once you become um, more experienced, but you're only gonna have two brushes, so you don't wanna get your paint colors all mixed up, unless you want that. So right now my water is pretty still. Um, I'm gonna use this brush for red and this brush for yellow. And the traditional suminagashi, which is the one I love because it's very simple, you just start in the middle and barely touch the top. The colors are gonna expand, and you, I just saw it, you may not be able to see it because right now you have very little color of paint on the surface of the, wa of the water. As you put more and more paint, you're gonna see more and more color show up. Now I'm looking and I'm seeing color. I'm actually gonna grab black. We don't have purple in our kit, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and, we're gonna make our own purple here, may as well. That'll be kind of fun. All right. So we've got purple now and yellow. Could we? Our design is still there, it's on top. You'll be able to see this better. All right, um, let's continue painting. You don't need to rush it, just take your time. Um, you're gonna put both of your brushes kind of perpendicular to the water straight up because you want a single dot to touch the paint. If you use your paintbrush this way, it's not gonna make a precise point. All right, are you starting to see the colors? Our colors are becoming more and more concentrated on the top of the water. And in traditional suminagashi, they'll use huge um, vats of water. And they'll do this for hundreds and hundreds of times to, to create these big circles that organically move. You know, the air, if you touch the table, um, even me, you know, as I talk right now, is affecting this. So there's lots of different things that affect your design. That's what makes it so fun and organic. And that's one reason that we love this as a kit. It's so relaxing to do the art. Um, it, it doesn't really matter what your paint turns out to look like. It's about the experience and creating through discovery and just enjoying yourself. Um, that's mainly what we try to focus on in our studio and the kits that, that I create and that we create here and with Science Loves Art is um, we don't want you to feel like you have to be an artist or we also don't want to tell you exactly how to do it. This is just an introduction. You can experiment and you're going to find so many cool ways to do this that um, hopefully you'll share those with us. Okay, I'm just gonna continue to go. Now, notice that I barely touch the paint on the water. If I were to dip the brush really deep, a lot of the paint would just fall to the bottom. And if that does happen to you, it doesn't matter. It just means that you've wasted some paint, but it doesn't really matter because you're gonna only print what's on top of the water. All right, this is looking pretty good. Now I am very, uh, I love the simple designs of the circles. It's just so relaxing. I could do this for hours. Um, so let me just show you, we'll print one of these. But if I were to just let this sit for an hour or two, it would just keep changing and changing and changing, which is what makes it so fun. My paper is just a little bit wide. I want it to fall easily. While my design is changing, I'm going to tear this. And you can cut your paper, but if you have a ruler, um, you can just tear your paper. It's just as easy, and it creates kind of a fun organic edge. All right, this will fit better. Got my smooth side down. Play around with both. 
actually what I might do is just add a little bit more. I could add a circle over here. I could add a circle over here. All right. Now whatever I see on the on the water is what's going to print. So if you want to keep playing around with your design, you can. You can just watch it for a while. You can blow it. You can fan it. Everything changes it. Movement changes it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to count, bow it a little bit. Count to three. One, two, three. Don't want it to sit in there too long because the paper will get very wet and can get softer. Um, you can dip it. If you see a lot of paint running, just kind of dip it a little bit. Now you're ready. Isn't that awesome? It printed exactly how I had it. All the paint is removed and printed on my paper. All right, have a place nearby where you can dry your, your work. I have a spot over here. All right, now there is still some paint remaining on top of my water, which is gonna keep my next print from expanding. Um, you can take a piece of paper, just a scratch paper or a napkin, and just kind of just take it across the top and try to remove some of that. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, um, but if you have a, after you've printed three or four times, you might just want to get clean water. That's what I usually do. All right, now I'm going to show you. We're going to change it up a little bit. I'll add a little bit of black. And you can see I only used a couple of dots. I still have plenty of paint here left. Um, and I already have one in my print. So you, you are going to have leftover paint most likely. And I'll show you a few things you can do with that. Let's do yellow and black. Ooh. Now another cool trick is you can barely touch your brush in the water. But let's say you want your black circle to get really big. Just keep holding it in there. It'll keep going. You can kind of almost even draw on the water. All right, let's go a little bit more. I think I'll add some over here. See how that pushes in, that's so fun. You can do whatever you want. This is so fun for little kids. It's fun for parties because everybody just, I mean, we take turns and everybody creates something and we have fun watching what everybody's creating. We do parties here in the studio and we sell these kits um, for birthday parties. You can have do them at your house or they're fun gifts. Now that's pretty fun right there. But I want to show you guys, if you take the end of your brush, and you just kind of draw a line, you'll create some movement in the water. And these little swirls just go. We have a little video on Science of Art about um, fluid dynamics and how like the water moves. Okay, I'm just gonna let it move a little bit more while I trim another piece of paper a little bit. Look how cool that is. So remember, you don't have to make it perfect. This is handmade stuff. This is beautiful, organic, handmade paper that you could use to make a little journal um, or card for your friends. Okay, the smooth side's down. One, two, three. You just don't want water bubbles to get trapped. Okay. Now the black tends to run a little bit. Do you see that? So just kind of tap it in the water, or you can run it under the sink. Just don't want it to get too, too wet for long periods of time because it's gonna start breaking down. The paper isn't that strong. Um, but look how beautiful that is. 
And when it dries, it's even more beautiful. But what I did was I took water and put one drop of soap, any soap works. All right, here we go. My water's moving just a little bit, but that's okay. It's gonna change. All right, now, instead of yellow, I'm not gonna tap my brush into the yellow anymore with this brush um, because I, now I'm gonna put it in the soap and I don't wanna put it, go back and forth, so. Um, all right, we've got our blackish blue over here, purple, and we've got soap, a little bit of soap. Do you see that? It pushes the paint out. I could keep holding that in there and it'll just keep making the circle bigger, bigger. So you only need to dip your brush when you see it's not doing much. Barely. Okay, another fun little thing you could do is just kind of use your finger like this and tap it. You'll make dots all over your design. That's kind of fun. Okay, this is kind of a cool design right there. I kind of like it just the way it is. So I'm gonna print that. Now, if your Japanese paper gets wet, don't print because it, it will not go where you have water. Only use it if it's completely dry. All right, let's see what we can print here. One, two, three. <gasps> Ooh, nice. So you see the little dots and lots of white. That's really pretty and fun. Okay. All right, wash my brush off a little bit and let's do one more. Let's do, do you wanna do a different color? Let's do red with something. Okay, we've got, I see blue residue on here and yellow from the last print, print, so my red won't, it won't expand all the way to the end, but that's okay. I just think it's fun not to have everything so planned out all the time. Artwork should be relaxing and a little bit just intuitive and expressive and everyone should be different and be okay with that. There we go. I'm gonna add a lot of paint. I'm just gonna keep going with this for a while. Sometimes I tend to like just the simple designs, but I wanna show you that when you keep going for a while and just let yourself fill it up tight with lots of colors, your colors will be bolder when you print. And what I find is when I print uh, a design I love it, but then I end up cutting it into smaller pieces and using it on many different cards or I make little journals, which if you're interested in learning how to make your own books or journals, we also have a little kit for that. We're all about kits and DIY stuff and simple materials and not expensive. Okay, that looks really cool. I like that one. All right. So I've got my smooth side. I'm not gonna get the whole thing printed. Um, here's a few little remnants. I think I might use those. Okay, I've got my smooth side down. One, two, three. Nice. Beautiful. That turned out really fun. Okay. I've got a little bit left. It's hard to stop. Okay, this one, this little piece got wet. So I'll show you, it's not gonna print. See where that 
but that negative space isn't, isn't going to print. So if you did want to design, you could paint it with just water and it would print everywhere but that spot. So that could be a fun project. All right. See, so you can keep printing. You may not even be able to see the, the paint. It'll only print the design once. And once your paper's wet, you can just kind of rinse it because it won't affect your design. Really cool. Um, this is something that we discovered could be done, used with your remaining paint. Um, so this is copy paper that is not included in your kit, but use any paper you have laying around the house and fold it into different shapes. Get this wet, get your paper wet and fold it, fold it into different shapes. I'll show you how I did it. I like, I did a fan. Now with this, with this paper, copy paper, you want to get it wet because it's going to soak it up kind of like a, uh, watercolor paper or something, you know, it'll soak up the colors and give you these really cool dried, see how the colors blend when they dry? You could use that as stationery, write your friend a letter. Okay, I'm going to fold it like this. I just want the full page, I just want a little bit. Now I'm going to get it wet because this is copy paper, it's not my Japanese paper. Okay, squeeze it out just a little bit. Now, I'm gonna tap it into the corners there. It's gonna absorb. I mean, it's better to do something fun with your paint that's left over than just let it there to dry. And you're, you know, that's why you don't wanna use too much um, paint. Don't, just put a few drops at a time. You can always add more, right? All right, it looks kinda messy, but I love how it's going to look kind of like a tie-dye when it does. I'm going to let this dry. Tomorrow I can open it up and then I can see the little design and texture. You could do this with silk or other fab. Silk is really easy, um, the easiest fabrics. You don't have to treat it or anything. And I like some Minagashi because you don't have to treat your papers either. Um, it's ready to go. Unlike the Turkish marbling where you do have to treat the water so that your paints will sit on top because the paints are a lot heavier than these types of paints. So anyway, thanks for purchasing your kit and supporting Science Loves Art. And please let us know, send us an email or comment on the YouTube channel and keep watching for more fun um, projects.